Hello, I'd like to discuss and demonstrate expansion cooling. Here I have a uh, cylinder with a piston, and uh, if I uh, imagine that I hold, hold this end closed over here and pull on the piston, then that gas inside that cylinder will uh, expand. Here I have a drawing of that. These little dots with the arrows represent molecules in motion. This is the closed end of the cylinder. Here's the piston. And I'm going to imagine what happens to this volume of gas in here as that piston moves to the right and that gas expands. Now if we think about it carefully, we note that these molecules in here are moving with a mixture of different speeds. Some are moving faster than others, but at a given temperature, there's an average kinetic energy and an average velocity. And the greater the average uh, kinetic energy, and therefore the greater the average velocity of the molecules, the higher the temperature. Those molecules that are moving at a certain speed come up and strike this target here, this surface of this piston here. And if the piston is at rest, the molecules on the average will bounce off with the same kinetic energy that they came up with. But if this piston is moving to the right, then on the average the molecules will come up here and leave with less energy. They will strike a moving target, and when something comes up and bumps into a moving target, it comes away with less energy uh, than it had when it came up. That's basically what expansion cooling is all about. The walls of the container, in this case just this one wall here, is moving away, and that causes the uh, expanding gas, the molecules of the expanding gas, to slow down and cool off. Uh, now I'd like to demonstrate expansion cooling with the aid of this little bottle here where I have a hose connected to it, and this hose is connected to the pressurized air so that when I turn this uh, valve down here and hold my hand over the top, I can pressurize the air inside this bottle, and then when I release my hand suddenly, then it quickly uh, expands and cooling takes place, and if we can get it sufficiently cool, we can form a cloud in that bottle. A cloud would consist of little droplets of water. But it requires a, uh, a low temperature to do that. It will achieve that low temperature with expansion cooling. It also takes one more thing in order to make this work effectively, and that is to have some seeds for those little water droplets to uh, nucleate on or to uh, cluster on. So I'm going to put some cloud seeds in here in the form of smoke particles. So we'll put some uh, smoke in a bottle, and uh, we don't want to uh, watch for the smoke, but we want to watch for the water droplets to form on those little particles of smoke. Now when the water droplets form, uh, that, is, uh, that requires a uh, low temperature, and uh, we'll achieve that temperature through expansion cooling. But that cloud that forms in there, consisting of those little water droplets, will quickly evaporate. So you'll see it appear, and then in just a few seconds, the water cloud will evaporate. So you want to watch for that to form, just as I release the pressure by removing my hand. So I'll pump some air in there by turning this valve on. Quickly release it, and we see the cloud form in the bottle expansion cooling.